It's really a tale of two Ks. There's West Coast, done hair, done up K, and then this um, East Coast, I don't have time to do my hair K. There sleeps in late in California K, and then there's up at 4 a.m. this morning working out in New York City K. There's all love signs and peace signs and good vibes out in California, and then there's tough New Yorker K Adams, and both of those are showing up in today's show. Tough love uh, and love love to a couple of teams who didn't make it through the throwdown round. Uh-oh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, we also have Darius Butler on the show. Uh, he thinks what about the Cowboys and Mike McCarthy? Don't miss it. And we have a big show, huge, literally. Joining us from the Cincinnati Bengals should be all pro DJ Reader. Up and Adam starts now. Only three games left in the season, which is wild and frankly a bit sad. I was thinking about that in my brisk walk through the New York City streets this morning. Uh, just three games left. Is it enough to get me to watch the Pro Bowl? Uh, probably not, but we got a big show, DJ Reader on. We have Darius Butler, um, Niners Eagles, got to get into that. I get to sit down with Boston Scott later today, so I'm looking forward to that chat, and you can catch it uh, after Marissa McBride edits it up, there. and she's an Eagles fan, so it'll be done very well, I'm sure, and catch that on Up and Adams later. Uh, but the Bengals, they are, you know, going to take on Kansas City. Uh, the Chiefs, perennial AFC championship hosts. They're playing at something called Burrowhead, so we'll have to get into that in a bit. I had not heard of that before. And I want to do uh, start with this Cincy matchup with KC. Zach Taylor addressed the media yesterday, and here's an answer to a question that he was asked about how he is finding ways to motivate his team. I take whatever I can get, and... Um, yeah, it's probably the opposite of what people, yeah, 20 weeks in, I'm absolutely looking for anything. You know, week one's easy. Uh, week 20, uh, you'll take anything you can get. And uh, I'll search every inch of the internet to get it. I believe this. I really do. And it makes me have all of these thoughts because there's plenty of places to find that motivation on all the corners of the internet. Uh, the handling of the playoffs by the NFL, for sure. Zach Taylor was the first one to talk about it. I was so impressed by his stance. The everyone thinking that last year was a fluke, the everyone thinking this year it couldn't happen, the me inferring the O-line needed help. And I'm sending Delta flights to Andrew Whitworth when clearly they didn't. These guys are seeing this stuff and it's working. Mike Greenberg, uh, a legend, agrees, of course. I saw this over the weekend. Not sure we've made enough of how much the Bengals felt they were wronged by the league the last few weeks. And they have shown up today like they are making a point. That was game day. I mean, it's obvious. It's, I mean, duh. And... Then I thought about our show. What are we putting out there? What kind of content are we putting out there? pro Bengals. So am, am I, like, against the Bengals? Like, should I be putting out more motivation for them and say that they can't do it? It's a real thing that I'm thinking about because all I want is for this team to win. And maybe I don't have to do that because... People who come on my show do it for me. Eric Weddle, set to join our show on Thursday. Do not miss it. He came on our show, and we have this funny thing going. Hootie Nation's been coming after him after he said the Bengals had no chance to win in Buffalo. This is everywhere. And I asked y'all, what do you want from Weddle? What am I supposed to do when he comes on on Thursday? And here are some of the tweets that are actually suitable for television. They don't have to be blurred out and they won't get kicked off of FanDuel TV. Um, Okay, Paul King says, an apology and say we own the Ravens on your show. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, Tim Cantrell says, it seems Mr. Weddle needs to make amends on your show about our Bengals. What does that look like? Look, I've seen demands for this man, Eric Weddle, to get a Bengals tattoo because he was so wrong. Not only is that crazy and unreasonable, and even demanding an apology, he said it. Does everybody apologize for the things that they say on television? We have this so wrong, like completely 180. We, and by we I mean you, owe Eric Weddle an apology. Everyone out there, we should be thanking the Eric Weddles of the world for giving this Bengals motivation. It is working. When you have Joe Mixon tweeting about the league and you have DJ Reader, who's on our show today, quote tweeting after this win in Buffalo. He's tired. He probably wants to take a nap, but he's saying, oh, Eric Weddle said what? Quote tweet. When you have the coach standing in front of the audience, these media people who are turning, turning out content and saying, I'm looking for motivation and it's working, even though it doesn't matter. Like the NFL playoffs, 
saying, there's no neutral site, the refunds happen, let's move on. They are sticking in, like they want to hear that stuff to keep them going. We've seen it work for teams before, and this team it's certainly uh, working for right now. So you know what, Eric Weddle, we apologize. We apologize for saying all the mean things and all of the just the venom from Houday Nation. We thank you for your support, and here's what we need from you. Not only are we apologetic, we're begging you to come on the show this week and pick the Chiefs. Don't come on if you're gonna pick the Bengals. In fact, we have a script for you. Uh, so it'll be a nice, quick, easy visit. We made a couple edits from last week. Just flip this, the, the team name, here it is. Here's what we need you to say, and scene. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry to say the Bengals have zero chance against the Chiefs. Okay, they can't protect Burrow. How can you expect him to go out there and win? That's it. That's all we need. So from the bottom of our hearts, we cannot wait to talk to you Thursday. And let's see if this carry over to a game that is hard to mesh with what I'm saying. They're playing the underdog. Nobody believes in them. They're selling tickets to this neutral site game. They're so mad. Joe Burrow goes out there, never gives any fodder, and says, better get those refunds sent to those people who bought tickets. And on the other side, the Bengals have won three against the Chiefs, and you've got a, a less than 100% quarterback who hasn't even is he? Are they rolling him out there officially? I don't know, but we're anticipating it's going to be uh, Mahomes out there. Who's the underdog in this matchup? Like, are the Bengals coming from a place of strength? They're calling it Burrowhead. So... Those two things meshing together is something I find interesting heading into this week and which one works and which one doesn't. Uh, and the Bengals, they're moving on. They're, they're at the AFC title game again. I was there last year. Um, and we'll leave that storyline here for now. Do you want to take a more minute this morning to put uh, a bit of a, a wrap on a couple teams that saw their seasons end this weekend? And I want to start with the Giants. Now, Giants fans, I understand the disgust you feel. 38-7 to 7 is never fun, uh, especially to a division rival in the playoffs. You could hear it from Brian Dable when asked after the game if the future feels bright in New York. Probably a little bit too early. I, look, I'm proud of the guys, the way we competed. I'm proud of, you know, the coaches, the staff members. Um, but you really only do this for, for one reason uh, at this level. Um, and it's, you know, it hurts when you, when you lose. I appreciate this from Coach Dable. He's not lowering the bar for his team. He's not making excuses. He's coaching to win every single game. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone, and I'm here in New York, and I haven't seen one Giants jacket or Giants hat or anything since I've been here, which I'm a little weirded out by, um, there's a big picture to keep into perspective here. Remember, this was year one of what was supposed to be a three-year plan to dig out of that awful cap situation. That, the, you know, we bring in Joe Shane, we bring in Brian Dable, they come in and they inherit that. And the Giants, they're ahead of schedule. They finally found their head coach lead this team into a future with Dable. The fans finally have an answer on what Daniel Jones can be for this team after all of us talking heads have debated this on every show. Uh, it's one of the only things that these shows have in common. This this is the, the conversation always. Now, they have to work out some contracts. Saquon, um, I'm confident they will, especially hearing what Shane said in the press conference yesterday, and I think he might have slipped up a little bit here. Listen to Shane's words. We're happy Daniel's going to be here. We're happy he's going to be here. Hopefully we can get something done with his his representatives, and that would be the goal, to build a team around him where he could you know, lead us to win the Super Bowl. So you're saying he's going to be here next year? We're going to have these off-season meetings here at the end of the week, and we're going to talk about it. And then with the resources we have, we're going to talk to his representatives and hopefully be able to get something done. This feels a little like when Gronk comes on the show and he'll be on on Wednesday and he says something that he's doing with FanDuel like before the kick of destiny was announced. He's like, I'm shooting something really cool. And I'm like, Gronk, don't say it. Like, we're not supposed to announce it. And that, that's sort of what that looked like. Quote, we're happy Daniel is going to be here. Do you understand? Followed by a little smirk from Dable when the reporter called Shane out on it. Shane did not recover well. But what else you will see is supposed to do? And we'll see if it means what it looks like it does. But either way, with those to running the show, I think the future is going to be very bright in New York. I just, I thought that was a cute moment. Uh, okay, I'm not feeling that. So that was my, weirdly, towards New York, that was my more like West Coast chill K vibe. Uh, we're being positive about that. I'm not feeling as positive um, about their NFC East rivals. The Cowboys, 
failed to advance past the divisional round for the 27th straight season. How can that possibly be true? And it's not the fact that they lost the game that is upsetting me. The Niners are are a loaded team. We get that. I honestly didn't expect them to win, but it is how they lost that has to make it tough to stomach for Cowboys fans. They caught San Francisco on an off day. The defense stepped up. Dak and this offense couldn't take advantage. Up and down. What do I make of Dak? I never know. And here's Dak talking about the missed opportunity. Yeah, just disappointed. As I said, I mean, guys that, that played their asses off defense who gave us an opportunity to win this game, who, who played their, who played hard against a really, really good offense, a really good team, and um, for us to only put up the points that we did, that that's unacceptable, and it starts with me, and um, I, I've got to be better. I mean, that's no, no, no other way to sugarcoat it. Okay, you can't question Dak's leadership ability. There's n- no answer you can give that's going to be satisfying for this entire situation. But the way he takes responsibility on his shoulders is admirable. Literally, if I was power ranking how quarterbacks react to the media, Dak is probably number one. I'm trying to think of who is better with the media than Dak Prescott is. He says all of the right things all of the time, and it's admirable. And it's, he's got the brightest lights on him. That being said, at some point, saying the right things and proving yourself as a leader only means so much. This team has higher expectations, and at some point, Dak has to take the step forward for them. Um, and it's not all on him. Once again, and I talked to Chris Carter about this, a Hall of Famer yesterday, how much is on Dak, how much is on Mike McCarthy? And McCarthy's decisions down the stretch are fairly being called into question. I defend McCarthy a lot. The decision to punt on fourth I mean, what are we talking about? What was it, on the Niners 40, and then it led to San Francisco's go-ahead touchdown drive? What is that? And th- for the second straight year, the final play of Dallas's season just made no sense to any of us out there watching wherever we were. Like, what, what was this? I know winning the game at this point was a long shot regardless, but not only was it completely bizarre, but I feel like the Cowboys are stuck in Groundhog's Day, okay? Fans are beyond frustrated, and it's hard to blame them. So we'll see if any changes are made this offseason. I was walking by into the building this morning, and I saw um, the incredible Marcus Spears, who I adore, uh, and uh, on Get Up this morning, and the bottom thing said, like, should they fire Mike McCarthy? What should they do after this loss? And I didn't think it was possible. You have Jerry out there saying... I don't care what happens going into this game. It doesn't mess anything up for McCarthy. And then you hear um, after the game, he says the same thing. After the loss, I thought Dak could do it. It's not going to mess up stuff with McCarthy. But how many more shots does Jerry Jones have at this thing? Is it apropos to do whatever you can to get your team over the hump? It might not be politically correct. He got your team. He got him a playoff win, blah, blah, blah. But something has to be done here. And if you can get a Sean Payton, you better bet Jerry Jones will do that. So I don't know what it comes down to. I don't know. Mickey Loomis is probably involved in it in some way and, you know, all of that. But if if there's a move to be made, I believe it would be. Um, Okay, we've got Darius Butler on the show. I hear he has a take on Mike McCarthy and Dak and the Cowboys. And we're excited about that, of course. I don't know this take, but I know we got a new mayor of shutdown. Shitty! Coming up. DJ Reader on the show as well. So you better... How about them Niners? Two days, two more. We don't like the Cowboys. One down, another to go. You better send those refunds. We in this thing! We get to go and play to go to the Super Bowl next week. You don't care what they throw at you in any way, shape, or form. You just walk on the field and take care of business. Lay everything on the line. These are once in a lifetime opportunities we got right in front of us in our hands. So what the f you gonna do? Hey, great team win today, everybody. Who they? Who they say they gonna beat the Bengals? One, two, three, one, two, three. Hey! Um. Throw down round winners. There we go. Lots of excitement, of course, with those. Uh, we got TJ Reader coming up on the show. We got to ask him about Eli Apple, and maybe we'll ask Darius Butler about him too. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, of course, who will be celebrating after Championship Weekend. But one thing is sure: we have to ask our governor of Shutdown City, former Patriot, Colton Panther star. Um, is your internet okay? Marissa is asking. Hey, it looks like we're back for now. You know, but. Soon as this season's done, hey, you verse Direct TV. I don't know if you guys have any partnership. You, you're dead to me, all right? You're dead. 
going to Starlink, baby. Yeah. But we're good for now. Starlink. I don't even know what Starlink yeah. is. It sounds like a like a, a movie star, starring Chris Pratt. Okay, we've seen a few things this week that made us over at Up and Adam say, we need a DBPSA. Can you help me break Uh-oh. these down? Let's get it, yeah. <laughs> Stefan Diggs. Oh my God. Stefan Diggs, not thrilled. Uh, at his entire team towards the end of this 27-10 loss, of course, to the Bengals this weekend. This video, talk me through it. He gets into it with Josh ah. Allen on the sidelines. Yeah. What? What's up? But you, you know, Dig. He's passionate. He, he's passionate. We know that. And obviously, this is an emotional game. Uh, he's one of those players that wears his emotions on his sleeves. And he's a receiver. You know, all these receivers, all these star receivers, have a little diva in them. And that's a very dependent position. He wants the ball. Target 10 times, only four catches, 30-something yards in a huge game. Um, you know, he, he was mad about a lot of things. I get it. Uh, you know, I don't like to see it, especially at the end of games like this. But uh, I, I understand it from a player that is as passionate as, as, and as talented as Stephon, Stephon Diggs is. I know. I love him. He can't kind of do wrong. He just cares about the game so much. And then he tried to leave the stadium, though, before the rest of don't his team that. was even. Don't love that, Kay. Okay, talk to me about this. And listen, he got a lot of heat. A lot of people didn't love it. He tweeted this in response. Let's take a look. It's easy to criticize my reaction more than the result. Want me to be okay with our level of play when it's not up to the standard? Nah. Want me to be okay losing? Nah. He deserves the smoke? I mean, of course, I think so. I think so. You know, you're a leader in the team. You know, you, you got that C on your chest for a reason. Uh, obviously, you know, it's going to be good things. It's going to be bad things. That team, you know, that locker room obviously have been through a lot this season, um, not only on the football field, but obviously off, um, you know, teammates, losing people, the shooting in the city, DeMar Hamlin. You know, it's been a lot of emotion. It's been a, a roller coaster. And those are humans, you know, inside those buildings yeah. playing that game. So once again, um, I, I understand it. And sometimes you look back, you say, hey, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. We're actually going to talk to him uh, out in the Super Bowl. He'll be out there on Radio Row. You got to come on the Man to Man Pod, too, on that FanDuel <gasps> set. But uh, we're going to talk about yes. it uh, a little more in depth. But, um, you know, you, you still, after the season, after the game, the win, lose, or draw, you go in there with your guys, you talk about it, and then you leave. So, like I said, I didn't love it. I'm sure he probably would look back and do things a little differently. But, um, you know, it, it, it's a tough, tough loss once again for him and the Buffalo Bills. Have you seen this Eli Apple tweet yet? Man, look, e- Eli Apple, he is the ultimate, the king troll uh, right now. And, you know, he's not the best corner out there, but but he, he, he he's, he's legit. He's a, he's a good player in this league, and he was trolling the Kansas City Chiefs uh, last year, I believe, and now trolling the Bills. Um, this yeah. is what he does, and obviously got a big game coming up against the Chiefs again. This is what he does, and, and he's been backing it up somewhat on the playoffs. So um, can't fault him too much, but when the rabbit, it's no fun when the rabbit got the gun. And right now, Eli Apple is, is taking his uh, victory lap. And he does that, but there's but he's got such a crazy history. Yeah, it was it was I think it was Tyreek Hill last year that he had this. Yep. But Eli Apple is a character who always has something. And I was and his mom was tweeting during the draft process. Remember, like his draft knock was that he couldn't cook or something. There was like he's always been picked apart, Eli Apple, for weird stuff. And and don't, you yeah. know don't let him win, Casey, or he'll come after you again. That's just how he exactly. is. Okay, let's. He's turned full yeah, heel ever about, since then. <laughs> Mike Mike McCarthy's oh my god Mike McCarthy's last play of the game I mean I just talked about it. what were they trying to accomplish here Zeke got leveled this <laughs> couldn't have been the design right I mean no and then he says after the game hey it's obvious that you know that wasn't the play we wanted to run and that's not how we practiced it no, it wasn't obvious, Mike. And You know, as a former coach, I've been a part of a terrible play that you knew was kind of doomed from the start before it even started. This play, honestly, I was a little excited. You know, you, you know, uh, Zeke obviously reported ineligible. He was snapping the ball, got a good snap off, by the way. But I saw 21 at center. I'm like, OK, what are the 49ers and, and McCarthy? Kellen Moore got cooked up here. Uh, but it was it was the absolute opposite of that. It was anticlimactic. Even before that, you know, Dalton Schultz along the sideline, not getting both feet down, getting knocked backwards. 
Um, the San Francisco 49ers have obviously been well coached, knowing that clock will continue to run. So it was complete mishaps at the end of the game for Mike McCarthy, um, just like last season against the 49ers in the playoffs uh, once again. But I think when, when it's all said and done, I think Mike McCarthy will be the head coach once again on the sideline for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, you a lot do? of people obviously been. I do. Yeah, I think it's, it's kind of going to be that same song and dance, and he'll be back just like what we see with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay every offseason. It's a question, it's this, it's that. Now, would I yeah. be completely shocked if Jerry Jones fires him and moves on and gets Sean Payton? That, I, that would be the only replacement I could see, um, who's a Super Bowl 100%. winning coach as well which Mike McCarthy is as well. They both got one Super Bowl, you know, coached great quarterbacks for a, a large majority of their careers. Um, that's the only move I would see, but I expect Mike McCarthy to be back on that sideline. Hopefully, they should pay whatever they need to pay to Dan Quinn to keep him on that sideline as well and keep that uh, defense humming because they play their asses off. I just don't know where else Sean could go. Like, Sean, you know, like... I don't know what good will he has with the Saints, like with the trade. Like, I don't think, I, I just don't think Arizona's a fit. I think the Chargers probably would have been interesting to him. Returning home, Carolina, I don't know. Is Mickey Loomis, like, going to swallow that and, and trade their Super Bowl winning Denver? coach? Denver, maybe? Their, like, legend I heard he's coach. asked for 20, it, 25 it, million. Yeah. I know. But that's Jerry Jones money, right? Like, that's, let's go. Like, that, if he wants a check, cut the check. The only thing he won't yeah. have there is, you know, control. Control, no control, exactly. You, and, we, and we know Sean Payton, um, and, and you have Mark on all the time, Mark Ingram, so he knows better than we do most yeah. likely. But it seems like he has his hands all over the organization, you know, final calls at rosters and things like that. And that's not the case with Jerry Jones, unless maybe they have some type of an agreement like, hey, I'll take a step back and let you handle it. Don't see it happening. Um, so once again, I think Big Mike will be on that sideline again. And, you know, Dak, Dak and that offense got to figure it out, man. They, they got to play better than that, especially when your defense shows up and holds this dynamic San Francisco 49er offense to 19 points um, on the road. You, you got to find a Oof. way to, to put some points up and win that game. Um, I'm excited that you invited me on the Man to Man podcast because I just want to come on and I want to do Shutdown City. I want you to say, yes. hey, let's go to... Shut down city! Take us where we need to go. Let's go. I didn't even know we were ready for this. But let's go. I'm always <laughs> ready for a trip to shut down city. Dealmore D- Lenore, once again, back-to-back weeks in to start his playoff career. Back-to-back weeks. First week, wild card week. Got a pick against Seattle this week against uh, Dallas. Got a great pick again. So he's back for another week in shutdown city in the playoffs after the divisional round. Going out to Cincinnati. Your Cincinnati Bengals. Big game. Woo-hoo! I kind of gave away this defensive game plan with Big Lou and how they were going to get after Josh Allen. Sending Mike Hilton. Now, this is shut down City in a different way. Five pass rushes and created four pressures last week against Josh Allen. I expect to see that again against Patrick Mahomes. The hobbled Patrick Mahomes um, this weekend. But the mayor out there, and they blew the doors off your New York Giants. I know you're out there in New York. James Bradbury, yeah. who's kind of put together an all-pro year opposite of another all-pro in my book, Darius Slay. Um, James Bradbury got his revenge, a team that let him go, let him walk. Eagles signed him. Eagles just signed all these great players. He played great. He was locked down, had a pick, had a big third down stop early in that game, and just like been lights out. So he's the mayor coming out of the division around going into championship weekend. James Bradbury, baby. See, and I love context. You're breaking down what you're seeing on the field. What I know is I used to live in New York, as you know. James Bradbury, you know we had a little something extra in this. Giants cut oh, yeah. him in the offseason, Darius. He spent, what, two years in New York. Uh, he earned a Pro Bowl bid in New York City. They get rid of him, and now he's a what? All pro. All pro yeah. in his first Damn season right. as an Eagle. Like That's the kind of yeah. stuff we like to see. That whole Eagles team, man, all, all those guys got a chip on the shoulder. Jalen Hurts, um, A.J. Brown, but they didn't, he didn't get paid in Tennessee. On the defensive side of the ball, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, who had an mm-hmm. incredible year. New Orleans didn't want to pay him. Bradbury was on the street. Slade got let, traded from Detroit. Everybody's got a little chip. Hassan Reddick, who didn't get paid where he wanted to. Like, it's a lot of dogs 100%. over there. 100%. Hungry dogs, and they're eating, baby. And then, and then their coach is, like, insane. Like, I think he's insane. I love I love Sirianni. He now look, he completely, completely failed the opening press conference when he got the head coach. But everything <laughs> from then on has just trended upward. He he's been incredible. He came on Pat show one time and just really just see and listen to him. That's really him. 
You know, that's really him. And that's really how you get through and lead those men in that locker room is just being genuine and knowing that you care about the guys. And that, that whole team will run through a wall for that guy. I don't, I don't want to watch the Eagles Niners game because I've championed and I love both teams. But like, how can I not pick the Eagles? Because that would mean I wouldn't get Sirianni in the Super Bowl. And like, how, what kind of fun is that going to be? I don't want a world where that doesn't happen. So it's going to be really tough. But let's look at these weekends games. I can't believe there's two left. It's insane. Yeah. Um, what's your one thing to watch DB lens that you're looking at in that Eagles Niners game? Oh, Eagles Niners, uh, the, the front of that Philadelphia Eagles defense. You know, you got four guys, you know, over double digit number sacks. They they led that category by a wide margin during the season. And obviously you got a bunch of coverage guys I just talked about on the back end who helped those guys up front hunt. So um, San Francisco 49ers up until last week playing against the Dallas Cowboys. You watch their tape, Kate. <laughs> Honestly, no disrespect to their opponents. <laughs> it looked like scout team a lot of times. Like, hey, I'm a fake here. And then we're going to go here. That guy's going to be wide open. He's going to run in for a touchdown. It looked like that a lot. The Cowboys kind of stymied that a little bit. And I think it started up front. So I, that's why I'll be keeping an eye on this week, this NFC Championship matchup, is how the Philadelphia Eagles defensive front can affect um, that San Francisco offensive line. So I think this game will definitely be won or lost in the trenches. Now, don't you, Eric Weddle, me with this next question. Rematch, last year's AFC Championship game, Bengals, mm -hmm. Chiefs, what are you looking at? I mean, you know what? I love the Bengals, and the Bengals have all the confidence in the world, obviously, going to Arrowhead that they can get the win. And once again, I'll be seeing how they, how big Luana Romo will uh, produce pressure and getting after Patrick Mahomes, who we expect mm -hmm. to be hobbled with that high ankle sprain. You know, coming in that first week, obviously, you're playing with, you injured in the game, a lot of adrenaline. You went to halftime. I'm sure they shot you up with some of that good stuff. You get through the game. You know, this week, they're going to have to manage and maybe get one good day of practice, but we're not going to expect him to be 100%. So I expect, you know, Cincinnati to get after him, get some pressure after him. And now last, last year, you know, Lou did an amazing job adjusting keeping him off his heels with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey out there. Now you kind of only have to worry about Travis Kelsey and maybe deploy, deploy a little more of those resources up, you know, getting after him up front. So that's what I expect to see from the Cincinnati Bengals defense. Coach, Weddle, Coach I can't wait Lou for needs... Coach Coach Lou needs those head Big coaching Lou. gigs. He needs like it's crazy what's been going on. Now we're gonna say bye to you, but I not before. Listen, you're mentioning all the stuff about Mahomes. A guy who who has done really well against the Chiefs is on next, but a guy who's never sacked Patrick. And you cannot tell me Ooh. that if Patrick isn't hundred percent, that DJ Reader is gonna get his hands on him and bring him down. I can't wait. Right, DJ? Oh yeah. What's up? What up, Kay? What up, man? What up, dude? How y'all doing? DJ, what's happening, man? Not much, man. Not much. Up at the facility, hanging out, getting the lift in. How y'all doing? Hey, doing good, man. I can't, can't wait to see y'all get after it once again this weekend, man. I'm excited about it. Y'all boys up there up front, Hunt, man. 9-1, 9-2, 94, all your, well, 98, all y'all boys get after it, man. I can't wait to see y'all go to work this weekend. Man, man, we're going to get after it. The guys going to always go get it, man. Yes, sir. All right, Darius Butler, we appreciate you. We'll talk to you, and I can't wait for to see what Radio Row in a couple of weeks. DJ Reader yep. won't be able to be on Radio Row at Super Bowl because he'll be playing in the game, and he's going to stick around and tell you why next. Don't miss it. Allen back to throw on second and five. Pump fakes. Now he's going to launch it deep downfield. PFF. Oh, excuse me? Really? Defensive tackle DJ Reader graded out as the highest among Bengals in their crushing defeat of the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. <laughs> you know, it's not surprised me, and we're lucky to have him right now joining us in his seventh NFL season, third yeah. with the Cincinnati Bengals, the should-be all-pro defensive tackle, my guy Grave Digger, a.k.a. DJ Reader. Hey! What's up? What's up? What's up, Kay? How you doing? DJ, I've had about four coffees here in New York this morning, but I do not oh, need so you, them. I am so, you, so excited yeah, you, so for this lit. game. You're lit. <laughs> oh, 100%. Show me where you are. Are you, where, are you at the facility? Yeah, I'm in the facility. I'm in the, uh, one of our equipment guys in his little office. Um, Sam is my guy right here. So he's got a cool little <laughs> poster behind me. He's got, 
He's got like a little wall of fame door right here. Hopefully I never make that door. It's a couple of X names, so I don't ever want to be on there, but Sam's my guy, so he oh. let me use his office for the interview. <laughs> did you or did you show up at the facility bright and early this morning to make sure that all those fans got their refunds yet? Oh, sh I don't know if they got the refunds, but I was here this morning ready to go, man, because I got another week. So hopefully they can exchange those tickets for something, though. I, I know they don't get back them processing fees, though. They be on that. They, them companies oh. gonna hold the processing fees. That's on them. <laughs> that, that's on them. That's such a good take. I love that. Uh, you took care of business against the Bills. That's mm -hmm. not even like the right thing to say. Y'all yeah. killed it. Dominated. I was on, I was on a plane. I was the poor person next to me had to deal with me. I had champagne. I'm going crazy. <laughs> you all are out there freezing your asses off out there. But uh, and we everyone talks about offense. This was so defense. I scream yeah. Coach Lou's name all the time. I'm always talking about you, but to he to hold the Bills, DJ, to 63 yeah. total rushing yards and only 10 points when they were running all over everybody all year, how were you guys able to do it? How did you do it? Man, you know we got the mastermind Lou back there, so he's going to get us some comfortable calls, but it's just really a team effort with us. Uh, there's a bunch of guys who will willing to do whatever the cost is every play to get it done. Whether that's in the run game and guys on the back end got a fit, they're going to come up and tackle. And whether it's in the pass game, we're going to do our job of clogging up the holes, of getting pressure while also being decent in our rush lanes and being disciplined. And we know that game going to come to us sooner or later. But a lot of people just can't be disciplined and loop, you know, it's something Lou preaches. So it, I really think that's what it is. Well, I want to talk about Coach Lou, but I don't know yeah. how to handle this because yeah. – we want to give okay. Coach Lou love, yeah. but we don't want to give right. him, like, too much love so he leaves us, right? We don't us, want right? our secret to get out there too far, right? Well, <laughs> hey, I, I know how you feel. It's, it's, But that's one of those things of progression, man. And, you know, we got to give him all the love because he, he deserves it. He, um, I watched him work his ass off this year, not just the field-wise, the mental, the – he trained every day. Coach Lou in some of the best shape of his life right now. Like, he trains. He works on it. And he tapped in with the guys, man. And as a as a person who plays for him, I couldn't ask for more out of my D coordinator to really trust in us the way he do. I and mean, like it's the process he trusts. He don't come over to the sideline. He's not yelling at us. He's not on us like that. He he talking us through everything. He's a real teacher of the game. And then and, and being able to study under somebody like that is it's a true blessing for sure. DJ, he's doing some special things over there. It's all of you are Crazy. top five defense. Three mm. wins over Patrick Mahomes. Nope, who can say that? Then you hold Josh Allen, like we were just talking about, to their lowest point total the entire season. So yeah. many other awesome, prolific, well-paid, big names, guys getting interviews, all this stuff. <laughs> they tr they've tried. They have tried and failed to contain these top yeah. quarterbacks in these big games. What is it? Give me, like, one thing that sets Coach Lou and his game plans apart. He got a lot of smart guys. We have a lot of smart guys on our defense, and what he trusts us to do, the different looks, the disguises, I think he's went out there and really handpicked this defense the way he wanted it, and he got – he has exactly what he wants on his defense, and he trusts that process. He makes sure we know we learn so much and understand how to get there, how to go about the game, and never give up on it. And he got the right good group of coaches. He got guys who really like – every coach on our defensive staff – cares they presentations throughout the weeks are awesome like i take notes on all of them and i never get bored listening to any of them talk about the game because they study it so much there's a lot of a lot of good people in this organization on our side especially yeah. that really help us learn the game you did a great job with that for sure there's a there's a lot of dcs or even offensive coordinators that are really good at that but then when they make the head coaching thing it doesn't work like they're uh -huh. just it's okay to be a great defensive coordinator. It's okay to be a great offensive coordinator. How would, because I like that you're talking about his leadership, how he is with you guys, because that's mm -hmm. what matters as a head coach. How would Coach Lou be as a head coach? I think he'd be awesome, man. You know, I wouldn't say that about a lot of DCs because it's hard to for some offensive guys to respond to defensive guys. I think Lou does a great job of just talking to players, whether that be offense, defense, special teams, anything. I think he could be a great coach of men. So I think he'd be an awesome head coach. Uh, the way he lets his team hold leadership, but he holds you to that standard. He's not going to let you get away with it. And he's going to teach you the right way, and you got to do his techniques. But he doesn't want you to be a robot. So I think that's huge when it comes to understanding coaching and, and with all players. I think he'd be an awesome head coach. 
I love to hear it. All right, let's go back to this game really quick because I'm watching. All right. And I could not believe that I was hearing these Bengals fans in the crowd. It does not happen in Buffalo. <laughs> and then I could hear it. I know you could hear it, but let's make sure everybody yeah. gets to listen to this. Take a listen. I was like, it was crazy. Hold on. I was like, okay. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. There it is. I do think right now the biggest difference is I heard it. you've got to get the ball out of his hand. You yeah. heard it. Talk yeah. me talk me through this. What did this do to up, you? I went out there for the first drive, and usually, you know, it's it's silent when the offense is on the field. I went out the yeah. first drive and I can't hear the call from Logan. I'm like, I come back to the sideline after that three and I said, it's kind of loud out there. And then my boy Josh looked at me and he goes, Well, look at it, all the black jerseys, all the black, black. Black shirts in the stadium. We lit out here today. And I was like, oh, man, it's up. We about to be on them. And then, you know, we, we went up 14-0. And I was like, you know, we can come out of this drive the way we want to. We can take it up from here. And we did, man. The guys the guys really, we, we stayed on it all night. A lot of communication. But having that fan crowd the way it was, it was so loud out there, Kay. Like, it felt like the first playoff game here in the Ravens. Like, it wasn't as loud as it usually is be on defense. But it was nowhere yeah. near as quiet for the offense as it should be. Talk to him. Talk to this Bengals team that's booking flights oh. to Buffalo, that's probably coming to Burrowhead. We'll get to that in a minute. Talk to these fans and how they show up for you and how much you need we them. We appreciate who they nation, man. We appreciate hey, y'all keep turning us up because y'all give us life. Y'all give us so much life. And we playing for y'all. We're not trying to let the city down, the who they nation down. So we out there playing for y'all. We appreciate y'all support all the way. That's from the heart. Y'all do everything for us. Y'all give us this energy to go out there and play every weekend for sure. We see y'all in the Twitter threads. We see y'all. We see y'all on the Twitter yeah. threads. We see y'all everywhere having our back, and we appreciate it. We got y'all back too. Let's talk about these Twitter threads because <laughs> you're you are hilarious. But it's not <laughs> even just you, and I don't even know. Like I don't know who's in charge of these guys. Y'all <laughs> tweeting. Nobody has any notes for y'all. There's no class you took. There's no. I don't know what's happening here. But let's start with this. Zach Taylor. I thought it was super interesting in his press conference. Uh -huh. He talked about how he's going to scour every inch of the internet looking for motivation for you guys. Uh, and. I would just like to know from you, what has been working? What has been motivating you? Just, I already know who I am as the person, the player, man, but it, it's just always funny. I read Twitter for comedy. I, I read Twitter all day. My, my girl will tell yeah. you, I, I'll sit there and scroll through Twitter and just laugh all day. And they're like, because it, it's the funniest place in the world. There's, you got no time for sensitivity on Twitter. They ain't care. But, I, I read through it and, you know, I find some motivation. I might stick with it for a week. I might hold that little piece of my heart for a week because I need it. I need that little extra push. Like like I said on the tweet, motivation is already free, but it, it it feels good when you see somebody going out there and saying no chance. Like, those aren't even takes you should have. Like, I, as a person, I've never counted just everybody out. I've never even been that type of person. So when I see those type of highlights, I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's a perfect one to hold on to right there. That's a good one. That's a good one to hold on to. And, you know, it played in my favor. So that's really what it is. I go okay. through and see what they say about me sometimes. So I'm going to say you're welcome because yeah. I handed you that NFL Appreciate safety, you. Eric Weddle, zero <laughs> chance to win. You tweeted about it. But and I, I think we have the tweet, which I loved seeing because it all makes sense. The motivation is working. I mean, I'm sure the handling of the playoff format also is motivating you guys, even though it doesn't even matter anymore. But would you like to thank Eric Weddle right now? What would you like to say to Eric Weddle? Oh, man, appreciate appreciate the just zero chance, Eric. I just appreciate that. You know, amazing player, amazing career. You know, you got us in the Super Bowl last year. I love watching you as a kid, especially with the no gloves, which is crazy to me. But you can't. Zero chance, bro. You know better than that. Come on, man. Zero. Come on, dog. We was just back here. What? What you? Why would you even say that to us like that? You you know those bad takes. You know that's bad locker room talk. You don't even go out like that. You, you're smarter than that. You wouldn't do that as the head coach of your high school. I know that. Oh. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Uh, he'll, he'll be on our show. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see if he'll come and double down and pick the Chiefs, which yeah, I would love nothing okay. less. <laughs> he yeah. probably will. That's We're all good on that. Though, you know. Listen, people are counting out this team. They did it. This, a lot, ton of people did it last year. Y'all made it to the Super Bowl. This year, you know, it's, it's a different team, different season. No two years are the same. Mm -hmm. I get that. Does this no. squad you have right now 
Does this squad pass the Super Bowl bound vibe check? Really think about it. Is it a better team than last year? Is there more chemistry? How does it feel compared to last year at this time? I think there's more chemistry in our team and everybody here. A lot of people here were on that Super Bowl run. I think there's more chemistry on our team, though, just in general, because everybody's more comfortable with what we have going on. So, I, I, yeah, I think, you know, we go take care of business this weekend and you'll see something special about us. But I think it's a special team just because of the group. Everybody's gotten older. Leadership's gotten better. So, it, like you said, it's just more of a bond. The locker room's different. Everybody's in there. You're not coming off that, that weird COVID year. It's not the first year of football. It's, it's expected and it's exciting. And everybody's a new year into the system. It's, it's fun. It's, 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 it's a fun team. I wish everybody could be in our locker room because people wouldn't talk the way they talk if they were in our locker room and saw us together, saw the guys, saw us at practice all the time, saw how we interact with each other, what we're like on a day-to-day. We don't get that type of coverage. and So people don't see that. But if they did see it, I think that their opinions about us would be a lot different. Do you think you have a better perspective because you spent, you know, time with the Texans and you came there yeah. now and then they embraced you? I mean, that this Bengals team, and we tell, I, tell, mm-hmm. I remember when I met you, I said, what is happening? The Bengals don't make moves like this. The Bengals don't bust out the checkbook and wrap their arms around anybody. And then you became the highest paid nose tackle at the time. So, so what is that locker room like? You're saying we never know. What is it like? What makes it unique based it's, off what you had with the Texans? It's awesome. Hey, you, you know, being in Houston, it was a great experience for me. I learned from a lot of great guys, a lot of pros, man. I was blessed to be, be in a locker room that was kind of similar. And especially on the defense side, we just had chemistry. Coming here the first year was the first year was really different for me. And so it was kind of like, oh, man. And then you kind of you get into that next year. And you just kind of see a brewer. Guys in the locker room spending time. Everybody's not rushing to get out of here. We're playing ping pong. And not just some people playing ping pong and – you got quarterbacks on there, specialists on there, defense line, offense line, everybody. Everybody's playing cards together. It's not – nothing's divisive about it. You see guys hanging out with each other that you would never think hang out with each other. We're yeah. all in groups and clicks and group chats. We talk all the time. So it's just different, and it's super competitive. We got a young team. So it – guys guys over here, I can beat you in flipping quarters. I can do anything. They're competitive about it all, and – it all starts from the top. Our quarterback's a dog. He's a dog back there. And so having that on offense with the weapons that he has and the guys and the guys he's able to lead, lead the way they play together and then what we bring on defense is just a special just a special team. Man. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. You say he's a dog, and y'all renamed. I don't know who it was. You can tell me who renamed Arrowhead Burrowhead. I need to know who was it. I don't even know who said that. I, I, I don't okay. know who brought that one well, out. I love that's, it. that's funny. All right, that's a good one. Okay, but but you you run things on the defensive side. What yeah. is the defense's relationship with Joe Burrow? You're saying he's a dog. We see that. He is a killer, cold blooded yeah. to every defense. Does he go does does he go after you guys? Is he yeah, how we is love he him. with you guys at practice? Yeah, and do you we like love it? Him. He played cards with us. He- we play pool, we play ping pong in there, we go in there, we shoot the basketball, we got a gym in our. So Joe's always around, and he embraces the defense. He talked to us. We all talk all the time. It's, it's not – our locker room, everybody can see each other. You can sit in our locker room, you can see a guy all the way in the corner. So it's not like you can avoid mm. people. And he's, he's, the, he's got the first locker to the right when you walk in. So he talks to everybody. He says words. You might see – it's so interesting. You might see a scout team guy during camp be over there, a guy who's an undrafted agent. Joe got the little chest thing set up in his locker. Kid might come over there and get beat. I don't see him yeah. lose too much in chess. He's super good at chess, apparently. They always sitting there struggling with him. So he, he's really good. And so they'll come over there, play with him, and him. He, he's just that type of person. He's very open, but he's he's serious about the work. And he got that yeah. that attitude and that dog and that confidence in him that you love to see in a person. You're somebody you're going to always ride with. Like, if he lead me into anywhere, I feel good with Joe Burrow in my corner. Yeah. I want to squeeze in a couple more questions. I want to get a couple in about this game. Uh, but since that locker room is so open, I got to ask you, have you heard the name Justin Reed come up this week? Nah, I ain't heard nothing this week. You know, Jay Reed, my dog, he had another bad <gasps> take. Can't get that type of blue support material, man. And then, not, no right, not know the names and numbers, but Jay Reed, my dog, man, he's a great player. So we'll see him this weekend. I'm sure they're excited mm-hmm. on the offense. I'm sure he's excited okay. to see them, too. 
I can't see any fouls from Chase. You got to go talk to him in that locker. I don't want to see anything between Chase and oh, Reed no, or whoever. No, no, okay. no, he didn't cool down. Good. <laughs> So listen, so so we we don't know about Mahomes, right? And I'm sure you guys, mm. I know you guys are preparing like he'll be 100%. Oh, but yeah. if he isn't, let's say if he's not 100%, explain to me, help me understand, like what does that mean for you going into this game? Man, don't change our game plan, our game plan to go back there and get after him and, you know, lock him up on the back end. And that's, you know, that's the game plan. I don't think it changes much of what we have going on. He's a dog, man. You. It can say whatever it's going to say. Patrick Mahomes is a dog. He's one of the best players in this league, and he he going to do whatever he can do to get out there and play. And I think when he get out there, even if he's not 100%, it's, it's win or go home. He's going to try to make the most plays out of everything. So I, I don't expect nothing different on our end, no, no matter what. What's up? DJ, you're, t- you're telling me if he's not a half step slower that you aren't going to get your hands on him? Oh, we're going to get after him for sure. I, that's not changing. That's going to change whether he's there or not. But, like, he, <laughs> I don't think that that's going to change our game plan. He, he amazing. You see some of the stuff he's still going away with, with one leg. Crazy. I see him go back there. And hand, he had to do a skip on the same leg to hand the ball off the other day. So, I mean, I, is it going to change much I of what know. he got going on? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's a ball player. He's a ball player. He's a gamer. Well, you're a gamer, and I cannot wait to see oh, you. I hopefully, we, I, maybe I'll show up at Burrowhead this weekend. We don't know who called it that, but it wasn't you, and that's Hello. all that matters. We got to go, though. We got to go. We gotta, our show's over. Our show's <laughs> over. I'm getting in trouble. They're yelling at my ear. DJ Ritter, right. one of my favorites. Right. You know that. We'll see you. I'll see you in Arizona, my friend. All right, okay. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Back on Up and Adams. I wonder how lit that Bengals Super Bowl win post show on FanDuel TV would like would be like. Yeah, well, <laughs> you'll see it Monday after the Super Bowl live in Arizona. We'll be right back. Big thanks to DJ Reader. We kind of blew off the second half of our show because he was so incredible. We appreciate the time, of course. Bengals, Chiefs, round four. We'll have Boston Scott to talk about the NFC later on. Tomorrow we have uh, Mark Ingram on the show and Rob Gronkowski on the show. And somehow I need to get them together on your screen. So we'll see you guys uh, in the morning. Enjoy your day. Um, And I'm going to go find Craig Carton to call him a ding-dong. Goodbye.